Nice job, huh? Right off the plane, and we have a fresh homicide for you. How do we know this is our guy? We don't. The neighborhood's about right, though. Her age is consistent with the other victims. Shouldn't the police notify you if it matches the M.O.? Well, they should. They never do. What the hell are you doing here, Novak? Looking around. Special Agent Bowman, Detective McElroy. Detective? She's with the Behavior Profile Unit, just in from Quantico. You know the Bureau has jurisdiction over serial murders. Only nobody said this is a serial killer. Well, that's what I'm here to find out. Where's the body? No sign of a struggle, none. There was one. He straightens up. What do you got on her? Her name's Jessica Larson. She owned a restaurant in the marina, Larson Station. I know it. Eight bucks for a glass of wine. All right, McElroy, let's not play dumb. Where's the photo? The earrings are missing. Another addition to his souvenir collection. This is the seventh homicide with the same M.O. Upscale young women murdered in their beds. No sign of a struggle. There's always jewelry missing, and there's always two photos. Two. One in the victim's hands, another hidden someplace else with a piece cut out. This is a serial murder detective. The Bureau has jurisdiction. OK. We're out of here. That's for prints. You're not going to find any. He never leaves prints. She was still alive when he took this picture. No way. Why don't you gotta have some leads? Give us something. Come on, Kurt. You can't keep stonewalling us on this. Look, if there was anything I could tell you, I would. Another dead body, another no comment from FBI agent Kurt Novak. No wonder they think we're stonewalling him. This many homicides, and we still have nothing. I'm working up a profile. We've got enough to at least get started. Yeah, we're getting started. He's way ahead of us. Hey, Novak, I got a call for you. I got a call for you, seriously. Keep it short, please. Novak here. Considering it, there are pros and cons, though. It's evidence, Novak. Don't you think the public should have it? Five 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 zero one four four. Hey, give me a trace on five 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 zero one four four. You don't believe in sharing? That's not very nice, Novak. Yeah, well, I like to keep some things to myself, you know. You're a smart guy. I'm sure you understand that. Just release the damn pictures, Novak. I'm not kidding. Look it. It's gone. Did you get it? Nothing. He surprised us this time. Let's be ready for him next time. A Hallmark Channel original movie, Meredith Baxter. I do not see any upside in you telling Kate that you're her mother. Leslie Ann Warren. Nothing I've ever done for your mom could compare to what she's given me. Bound by a secret, an Aerosept exclusive event. All right, let's go over the details of the case one more time. He leaves us two snapshots of each victim. He cuts one of them up. But he doesn't dismember the victims. Exactly. In fact, he lays them out very neatly. I mean, he wants it to look like they're not hurt at all. What does that tell us? I think he's collecting the pieces. A leg missing from this picture, an arm from another, part of the face, the hip. We've got the body. We don't need the pictures. So why does he leave them? 
He wants us to know he's taking pictures. Why? It's a family album. When he's leaving them for us because we're part of the family? Well, actually, that's very possible. Let's consider something else. I mean, look at the way he straightens up. Look at the way he takes care of the body, brushes the hair, makes everything neat. I'd say that makes him a caregiver, probably from a small family, possibly an only child. So we get a neat, tidy guy who may or may not be an only child. How does that help us? Look, let's talk about evidence. What have we got? He trims the ends off the pictures. No serial numbers, so that's no good. He meets the victims outside their businesses so no one can see them leaving together. No one can ID him. Guys, you're telling me what we don't have. What do we have? We have the fact that he picks up successful career-oriented women. I assume this means he's very presentable, well-spoken, educated. Very good. All right. So what else? Come on, people. We've got five homicides in the L.A. area, one in Denver, one in San Francisco. He travels. Maybe a salesman. And we know this is his home base because there's multiple killings here. Good. Good. Andrea, keep working on that profile. Maybe you'll come up with something a little more concrete. In the meantime, let's run the Denver and the San Francisco dates. Maybe they have something in common, a trade show, a big tennis tournament. I don't know anything. First murders were months apart, then weeks, and one before this one, just 10 days. He's raised the stakes. He's gaining on us. Let's get a move on, huh? Sleeping? Oh, yeah, total log. He said on the news tonight that there was another murder. Mm. You know, when he's asleep, he looks just like you. He has your mouth. Does not. Oh. The image of your father. Is it the same killer? Turn around. I want to check out your. Why wouldn't you answer a simple question? What's the question? Is the killer the same guy? We're in bed and you want to talk about killings? Kurt, when do you want to talk about it? I don't want to talk about it. Well, then it's a good thing I saw you coming out of the building on the 11 o'clock news, because otherwise I wouldn't know what my husband's Come doing. On, now, Michelle. would I? Well, I'm not asking for deep, dark FBI secrets. I just feel so out of the loop. It's not a loop you want to be in, trust me. Kurt, you are distracted all the time. Distant, you know, I, you used to talk to me. I never used to work serial killings, Michelle, you know? We never had a son then. What does Johnny have to do with this? I didn't say I wanted to talk about this in front of Johnny. You know what, we're not two kids living in an apartment anymore. This is ugly stuff, OK? It's not the kind of thing you bring into your house. <laughs> Another bad dream. You want me to? No, I'm fine with it. And this is exactly why I try to keep this out of the house. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. It's OK, partner. Uh, hi, Daddy. Hey. There wasn't anyone here, was there? No. Are you sure? Am I sure? Your dad's an FBI agent. I'm sorry. There's nothing to be sorry about, sport. If I didn't get scared, then you wouldn't have to wake up and come in here. <laughs> I wasn't asleep, and I was coming in here anyway, partner, because I wanted to see my best buddy. So move over and let me lie down with you, all right? You got to get some sleep, man. You got school in the morning and oh. School. Yeah, well. Everybody's got to go to school. All right, mm -hmm. so close your eyes, all right? Dad's right here. Come on. Get some sleep.
Honey. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I didn't mean to sleep in here. Sorry. Dad. Mm-hmm. Why do I have all these nightmares? Well, buddy, everybody has nightmares. I mean, you worry about stuff during the day, and it pops up in your head at night when you're sleeping. You're worried about your dad's job, aren't you? Yeah. Johnny, your dad's part of a team. We go after the criminals together, and we catch them, and we put them in jail. There's nothing for you to be scared of. I'm always going to be there to protect you and your mom. Okay? Okay. Tell you, if you want to be scared of something, I'd be worried about how I'm going to handle this hot rod once I get this wheel on. So let's take it for a spin, huh? Cool. Oh, oh, oh! Nice. Oh! Woo! Whoa, that was so fun. Maybe I should build one of my size. Dad, come on, let's do it again. Ah, uh, we should go home, buddy. No, one more time. <sighs> come on, one All more. All right, one more time. Yeah! Hey, I'm going up, Bill. <laughs> no hands. Mom, I came down Cherry Street Hill. It was so cool. I knew it would be. Now go get yourself washed up. Something came up. While you're at it, take a bath. <clears throat> Another homicide. Bath! Now! Come on, I'll help you get started. Where? Sydney, Australia. Sydney, Australia? Same M.O. The victim ran a small theater. He left behind two snapshots, the whole thing. It's our guy. Well, stay in touch with him. Get all the reports, huh? You're going. Look, Andrea, I got too much of my plate here as it is. And besides, they're not going to let me investigate their case. They have a suspect in custody. I am not going into detail. You don't need a family history. Just know that's the only way I'm going to do this. So you decide. Not that, not, not, not that sweater. It makes me look like I weigh 300 pounds. So, what do you say? I owe you one. Thank you. I wish you didn't have to go. You're going to miss Johnny's spring break. He's really enjoying his time with you. I wish I could spend more time with you, too. What do you say? We all go on the bureau. Are you serious? Yes. You're insulting my intelligence. This was found in the dresser in your hotel. 
never seen that in my life. Well, maybe this picture will help you remember. Name is Leslie Blaine. I don't even know her. Yeah, well, you're not doing very well in uh, explaining things today, are you, Roger? Maybe you can explain this. I don't know. I don't smoke. Larson Station. That's a restaurant in Los Angeles, isn't that right, Mr. Novak? In the Venice area. I've never been there. We've had seven homicides back in the U.S. A lot of similarities to this one here, Mr. Fortson. Well, I don't know anything about that. Nothing. Put yourself in my place, Roger. We got a phone call saying you were seen picking up Leslie Blaine at her place of business. Who would say that? I've never been there. I have a wife and a child. I only go out with my family. Well, you might be making a good point there, Roger. We don't usually put much stock in anonymous phone calls, but how does that explain the photo of the dead girl being found in your hotel room, and how does it explain the necklace? And the matches. I never saw these things in my room, and I don't know how they got there. I can do you a favor, mate, make it a lot easier. We do not have capital punishment here in Australia, okay? So wouldn't it be a good idea if you talked to me? Right, this is a man who does not want to help himself. I think we should just leave him alone and let him work it out. Interview terminated, 12.15. Show's over. I'm not so sure this is our man. Of course it's our man. He's petrified because he knows we're onto it. Novak. Congratulations. Yeah, I know. It looks good. I'm not sold, though. This guy's falling apart. Yeah, of course he's falling apart. The game is over. We're dealing with a deeply divided personality, Kurt. Well, I don't care how many personalities he's got. He wouldn't whimper like that. There is a ton of evidence. This is not the guy who called me on the phone, Andrea. But you said he disguised his voice. All right, look, we'll play it out, okay? We've got seven homicides, they've got one. If Roger Fortson is alibi for any of them. We're already on it. All right. You sound like you want to be this guy's lawyer. Well, as far as I'm concerned, we've made our case. Vivia. Have you made an arrest? You have a suspect, right? Is he an American? We have a suspect. We are proceeding with prosecution. And yes, he is American. But how long has he been in Birds are weird here. How come everything's so strange? Well, Australia is separated from everywhere else, so things just evolve differently. Oh, it looks like Daddy had a good day. Did he tell you they'd lock him up? Hi, oh, sweetie. before dinner. Your father should be home by then. I'm not tired. Then humor me. Can I watch TV? No. Please. Oh, all right. He's in the row. He's having a storm in the Can we get a pizza? 
Let's see when Dad gets back up there. Right here. It's all right. Okay? It's okay. <sighs> oh. Hey. What's up? Another bad dream? It wasn't a dream. I saw him. I saw somebody in the room. Who'd you see, buddy? What do you look like? That's because there was nobody here, partner. It was just another bad dream, huh? Hey, I got something might cheer you up. Hey? Wow. Wait till all the kids at school see this. Hey. Use with caution. <laughs> Please, do that. Especially in here. This is for you. Oh, Kurt, it's beautiful. Thank you. Thanks, Dad. You got money. <laughs> Mark Hall of Fame, Aiden Quinn, Rachel Griffiths, America Ferreira, Plain Song. What do you mean you can't find the tickets? They're right here. In the computer, sir. You're not going to find them in the computer because they're in my hand. Someone seems to have cancelled your reservation. It can't be cancelled. I have them right here. I'm doing the best I can, sir. Your flight is booked out. Yes, my wife and son and I are part of who it's booked out to. Ah, here it is. You were re-ticketed to Oceanic, Flight 816. Look, I haven't been re-ticketed. I have the tickets in my hand. This is ridiculous. Uh, you were re-ticketed and upgraded to first class. You know what? I'm an agent of the U.S. First class. It's not going to cost extra, is it? No, sir. Thank you. Welcome, sir. May I help you there? Yeah, down here. This aisle, second row on the left. Maybe the bureau upgraded is because you caught the guy. Maybe. <laughs> Welcome, sir. First class. This way, sir. Enjoy your flight. Okay, that's the second row, the window seat, the aisle, and the one opposite. May I take your coat and your scarf for you, ma'am? 
Your jacket, sir? Uh, no. Thanks. Look at this. <laughs> I'm sure we aren't paying extra for this. Hi, I'm Justin. You must be Johnny. How do you know my son's name? It's right here on the manifest, Mr. and Mrs. Novak and the son John. Well, that's cool. Can I get you folks a drink? Uh, soda? Anything without caffeine. Long flight, wise choice. You? Uh, white wine, please. Sir? Uh, scotch and soda. Be right back with the drinks. Let me get that. It's all right. Oh, really? I've got it. I was just trying to be helpful. Excuse me. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is your Captain Bruce Copeland. At this time, I'd like to welcome you aboard Oceanic Flight 816 from Sydney to Los Angeles International Airport. Now, sit back and get comfortable. We're waiting for one more passenger. As soon as everyone's on board, we'll be pushing back from the gate. It shouldn't be more than a few minutes. In the meantime, our flight attendants are standing by to help you. They paged the terminal? Uh, several times. Nothing so far. And this is someone who was on the flight from Melbourne? Yes, sir. OK. We'll give him two more minutes, and then we'll yank his baggage. Not going to cost us an untimed departure over some clown who's probably passed out in the terminal lounge. Way to go, Bruce. Put a little scotch and the scotch and soda in first class. <laughs> Flight attendants, prepare for departure. Oh, I wonder if he made it. Who? That guy we were waiting for. Oh, we assume it's a guy? Yeah. Oh, just because someone is late doesn't mean it's necessarily a woman, Kurt. I bet it's a guy, Daddy. You're always late for everything. When is the last time I Every was... one of my soccer games... When was games? the last time we ever saw the beginning of a movie? Wow, you two really know how to hurt a guy. I'm going to have to take the glasses away for takeoff, but I promise a refill as soon as we're in the air. Thank you. Seatbelt, good man. Um, I'll freshen that as soon as we're up. OK, sir. Thank you. Seat back up. better get back. Well, if there's anything else, just press your call button. Oh, thanks. But the walk will do me good. It's not a stretch the legs on a long flight. Huh? Thank you. OK. Wow, he's passed out, huh? <laughs> you are so sweet. I love them. The scarf and this. You're spoiling me. What are you talking about? Where did you get those? What do you mean, where did I get them? Where did you get them? Where you put them? In the seat pocket. What, Kurt, what's wrong? Michelle, they came off the last victim in Los Angeles. Oh, my god. Yeah, well, uh, 
Why don't you send me your address and I'll have her uh, drop you a thank you note, huh? That's very cute, Novak. You know, you should have released the photos like I asked you to. Get the public involved. Maybe somebody saw me leave one of the apartments. Maybe some concerned citizen would have turned me in. Maybe you could have saved some lives. Look. know where we are the seating plan remember i guess look michelle if you were on the same plane as me he's not gonna let me know that is he i don't understand if you arrested him the sydney police were gung-ho to close the case if you weren't i had my doubts oh it's not like you kurt how could you just let them i don't have jurisdiction in australia i told the office to keep working on it it's the only thing i could do I wish you would have told me that. Well, I didn't know it would involve us. Well, the truth is, Michelle, the guy has called me one time before this. What? I didn't tell you. I didn't want you to be alarmed. When did this happen? Look, he's zeroing in on me because I'm leading the investigation. It happens. Kurt. John, he said he saw someone in the hotel room. He, you don't think that... No, 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 no. I don't think... It. Did you have a nice nap? Yeah. yeah. Uh, can I get a soda? Sure. Sure, honey. Oh, yeah? Excuse me. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Novak. No one is allowed to go into the flight deck. I'm with the FBI, I need to speak with the captain. Captain, this gentleman needs to talk with you. Yes? Special Agent Kurt Novak, Federal Bureau of Investigation. And? Captain, the passenger we were waiting for before takeoff, did he get on the aircraft? No. Why? Was he ticketed from Melbourne, or was he a new arrival? I'm answering your questions. You're not answering mine. Now, on this aircraft, I'm the captain. So I suggest you put your cards on the table. What do you think's the matter? Why does anything have to be the matter? Well, he's with the FBI. I'll bet he's the one who came over because of that serial killer they caught. You're kidding. No, it said in the paper some FBI agent came over. Really? There are only two possibilities, Captain. The earrings were put there by somebody who's still on the aircraft or by somebody who got off before we departed. You're assuming it's someone who got off? Look, I'm not assuming anything, but I have to consider every angle. If it's someone who's still on the aircraft, he's going to be with us the next 14 hours. But if he got off... Right. He could be anywhere. Which is why I need you to tell me everything you know about a passenger who buys a ticket to L.A. and gets off 12,000 miles short. <laughs> Is 
Isn't this unbearable? What? Economy. My manager made the reservation. I don't know what happened. Must be awful. Mm -hmm. Right, this is what we got. Passenger's name is a Mr. Terry Williamson, American, board of Melbourne, booked to L.A. But he's not on board. Well, we had uh, 100, 125 passengers from Melbourne. About half of them are booked through. But the layover in Sydney is usually around two hours. Most of them get off, get back on again. This guy didn't get back on. Now, do you mind telling me what you want this guy for? Murder. You killed someone? Eight people, actually. Glad he missed a flight. I'm going to need to speak to some of your flight attendants. If they remember this Williamson, maybe I can get a description. No problem. But if you're uh, following this guy, how is it you don't know what he looks like? Actually, I think he's following me. Daddy go. Oh, uh, he'll be back in a minute. He he went to go talk to the captain. What are they talking about? I think that Daddy wants to learn how to fly the airplane. Yeah, right. Oh, they're the same earrings, all right. No question about it. He just called me. He called you on the plane? Then he's got to be on board. Look, Cap, could he make that call from the ground? Sure. If he knew the number, which he could have got off the phone when he was a boy. Did you get that? Affirmative. What do you need me to do? Look, there was a passenger from Melbourne who got off the plane during a layover in Sydney. He never got back on. Name's Williamson. Mary. We're transmitting the manifest to you right now. Check him out. I'll get right on it. Get back to me the moment you know anything. Kurt, wait a minute. What? You were right about that guy they had locked up in Australia. He had back surgery. He was in the hospital for the first two homicides. How was it that I knew that? Over and out. Excuse me? Johnny, Mommy and Daddy need to speak alone for a minute, okay? How come no one ever tells me anything? Come on, buddy, you and I have secrets, right? Right. Well, Mommy and Daddy have secrets, too. Now, put your seatbelt on. We'll be back in a minute, okay, sport? Apparently, there was a Melbourne passenger who didn't get back on. All right, come here. He didn't get back on. He could have put the earrings there and got the phone number at the same time. Andrea's checking it out. I hope you're right. Just what? we need to talk about just putting ourselves. There's a woman in the tail section. I'm not sure what's wrong with her. I'll check the manifest. I'm sure that there's a doctor on board. I'm going to tell the captain. I want you to go back and stay with me. Can you do that? Just slow down. But I don't want to create any panic, all right? OK, let's go. Miss, I'm with the FBI. Is something matter? It's nothing. It's just a... You'd better come with me. All right, okay, just hang on. Sweetheart, go sit with Johnny. All right, I'll be right back, okay? What's the problem? There's a woman back. I need you to stand guard. Don't let anybody back. Sir, please uh, take your seat. Ah, uh, sit tight, honey. I'll be right back. Mr. 
Mrs. Novak. Yeah. Everything okay? Uh, can I bring you something? Well, how about Johnny? No. No, no. We're fine. That's all right. Well, if you need anything, please just press the call button. I found her like that. I didn't touch her. Is she traveling alone? I believe she is. I'm a doctor. Let me have a look. Well, that answers your question, Captain. There's a serial killer on board. And he wants me to know he's here. Captain, I don't want any of the passengers knowing there's been a homicide. Let's keep it neat to know as far as the crew is concerned. You don't think it could be? What, one of them? Why not? I'm not ruling anything out. Now we have to figure out where we're going to put her body. Luggage hold. We'll have to take her through the cabin. All right, but let's get a stretcher and an oxygen mask. We'll tell everyone she's ill. No one needs to know she's dead. Monique? This is your captain speaking. May I have your attention, please? One of our passengers has taken ill. Now, there is no reason to be alarmed. We're fortunate to have a physician aboard. At this time, I'd like to ask you to keep the aisles clear until the flight crew has finished transporting her through the cabin. Thank you. What happened to her? Seizure. She hit her head pretty hard when she fell. have access to this area? Not without the elevator key. Good, make sure no one else comes down here. Hello? Is this the Williamson residence? Yes, it is. FBI, we'd like to talk to you for a moment, please. Passenger isn't sick, is she? I'm gonna tell you as much as I know, Michelle. It's no mistake that this maniac and I are on the same plane. He switched the tickets to put us on this flight. He's killed this woman to let me know that he's here. It has clearly become personal. Why would he do that, Kurt? He's trapped here on the plane with you. There's nowhere for him to go. Unless he doesn't care what happened. Kurt, why wouldn't he care? Michelle, this is not a rational man. We don't know what he's thinking. Okay? Okay. I've got to talk to you, Mr. Novak. All right. Go ahead. Just wait with Johnny. I'll be right there, okay? Yes? You know, I keep going over all this in my mind, and... Well, there's this passenger. He was watching the lady who got killed. What do you mean, watching? He kept staring at her. It was kind of weird. All right, show me where he is. Guy in the aisle, six rolls back. Wait a minute. 
Aren't you going to question him? Let's find out who he is first. This is Oceanic 816, confirming we have a code 1114 dead body on board. A passenger, female. I'll transmit you the details. Make sure you have the appropriate equipment on landing. No, uh, no, it wasn't uh, illness. It's uh, a homicide, apparently. We have an FBI agent aboard. I'll keep you posted. We call to the States. It's ringing. Hello? Andrea, Novak. He's on the plane. How do you know that? Are you sure? He's killed a passenger. Oh, my God. OK, listen. I just found out your missing passenger is a woman. The killer somehow altered the manifest. Maybe he killed her, too. Look, let's hope that's not the case. Andrea, I want you to use the manifest I sent you and run the names of every male passenger between the ages of 20 and 50. There's got to be 100, 120 of them. But I want you to start with a passenger named, uh, do you have a seating chart? Yeah. Uh, passenger... Reese. Carl Reese. Okay. And then check all male flight personnel, in particular, a Dean, uh... Franklin. Franklin. Dean Franklin. And Andrea, I don't need to tell you how urgent this is, all right? Get back to me. I will. Okay, one moment. Uh, Mr. Novak, you got another call. I'll uh, put you through. Novak. Making any progress, Novak? Oh, I'm holding my own. Really? Can you pass this through into something I can walk around with? See, I think you're losing passengers. I think I'm gaining on you. That's because you're sick, buddy. I know. It's unbearable. We really gotta have a talk about this. Yeah, well, you name the place. No, I don't think we're ready for a face-to-face -face just yet. Yeah, well, I'm ready, pal. I've been ready a long time. We're going to meet, I promise you, Kurt. But it's going to be my call, not yours. Don't count on it. I don't count on anything. Or anyone. You know, I'm still upset with you, Kurt, about those pictures. Yeah? You mean your family album? You make it sound so quaint. Like your little family. Let's leave my family out of this, huh? Sorry. Like using my wife's scarf to kill that passenger. But didn't you like that? I thought it was a nice touch. Kurt, why are you upset? I mean, I respect you. Why do you think I put you in first class? Huh? What did you use to kill the other woman? Oh. Is it another one? Terry Williams. You're guessing. Don't do that. Let's stick to the facts. Like why you cut up the photos? What do you think? We're thinking it's some symbolic form of mutilation. I don't mutilate anybody. How did you even vote? They all look so, uh, nice. So neat. Perfect. It's important to be perfect, isn't it? Huh? To be in control. Take care of people. Don't you worry about who I'm taking care of. What about you, huh? What about me? What is it about me, anyway? Miss, do you have a key for this door? See, you're so busy trying to protect all these women, you can't even protect your own pretty little wife. Oh, I'm taking good care of her. Don't worry about that. Oh, really? Then tell me, what are you doing way back at the tail end of the plane when she's up front with me? You're bluffing. You know what would happen to you if you... <sighs> oh, Kurt, it's so beautiful. That's what she said, isn't it, when you gave her that cheap, crummy scarf? Now, those earrings I get from were beautiful. And, hey, Kurt. Got a lot more presence in mind for her.
cute. Very cute. Talk to you later. No, Johnny, go back. I'll be right back. Johnny did see him. He was in the room. Johnny and I were alone, and he was in the room. I want you to pull up his schedule for the past year and they need it immediately. Hey, I think we got something. What? Passenger at the top of Novak's list, Carl Reese. Currently unemployed, but worked as an attendant on Southeast Air. Canned him for sexual harassment. Transmit that to Kurt. Captain. Can you have one of your people bring Mr. Reese up here? Justin? And you can't tell me what this is about. I'm sorry, sir. I really have no idea. Hello. Right this way, please. Thank you. What do you want? Have a seat, Mr. Reese. And who might you be? Special Agent Novak. I'm with the FBI. Nice photo. I walked through the cabin earlier, Mr. Reese. You weren't in your seat. What do we have, bed checks now? Just answer the question. Where were you? <sighs> I don't know. You know. The guy next to me was snoring. I saw an empty seat and figured I'd sit there for a while. I see you were a flight attendant. Fired. For sexual harassment. Hey, this isn't about that lady who got sick, is it? Why would it be about her? What did she tell you? She's dead, Carl. She was murdered. Yeah. I had I had nothing to do with her. That's the truth. I, I tried to talk to her and she told me to get lost. I got lost. Okay. Let's talk about something else. Where were you last Wednesday? <laughs> Why? A woman was murdered in her apartment in Sydney. Where were you? I wasn't even in Australia last Wednesday. You don't believe me? My ticket. Let's take a look. Mrs. Novak, can I get you something to eat? Um, you know, I'm not very hungry. 
Maybe later. Hey, Johnny, how about you? You hungry? Yeah. Good man. Uh, you want to clear a space for me? Thank you. Let me see. You look to me like you are a lasagna guy. Am I right? Yeah. I thought so. Uh, how about another glass of Chardonnay, Mrs. Novak? Maybe relax you, easy apprehension a little bit. Why do you say I'm apprehensive? I know that there's something going on and that your husband is involved in it. Hey, it must be pretty cool to have a dad who's an FBI agent. Yeah. Now, you have to eat all the salad or there's no dessert. That's an FAA regulation. <laughs> You've got a good kid there. Most kids drive us crazy on these long flights. I'll be right back with your wife. Okay. Thank you. Did you get your man? Let me see a crew list. Now, wait a minute. Look at Captain. The killer knows this aircraft. He knew where to take the model to strangle her without being interrupted. He knew how to get out of the restroom through the overhead. He had access to passenger lists. He knew how to get into the airline computers to put me on the flight. He knew how to use the airline records to find someone he could frame in Australia. Now, I'm betting that Terry Williamson never even got off the plane in Sydney. So you tell me, who the hell else could have pulled this off? Now, if Terry Williamson didn't get off the plane, where could she be? Well, she's not in any of the cabins. She has to be below decks. We took her down there before we landed in Sydney. Someone would have noticed she was missing when we did the sea checks on landing. What about when you were on the ground? I mean, there's always confusion when people are deep cleaning. Yeah, but that's when catering uses the elevators. They restock the kitchens. No, no, wait a minute. He could have taken her down the hell hole. Store our computers down there. Excuse me. Flight management system, electronic controls, everything we need to run the aircraft. Who else has a key for this? No one. Hey, I'm not incriminating myself because I'm the only one who's got a key, am I? I'm not ruling you out as a suspect, if that's what you're asking. The Australian lights are back seems to be enough. Stay right here, and I mean that. I'll be back in a minute. Where's Morgan? Excuse me, could you watch my son just for a second? I don't want to leave him alone. Oh, I'd be happy to, Mrs. Novak. No problem. Thank you. I'm breaking the rules tonight. Ice cream before lasagna, but don't tell the captain. <laughs> Thanks. No problem. Your mom asked me to keep an eye on you for a couple of minutes. Is that all right? Mm-hmm. They're really keeping your dad busy tonight, aren't they? Yeah. Give me a moment to look for him. Well, we got a long way to go, so I think you ought to finish your ice cream and try to take a nap. I don't want to go to sleep. Bad dreams? Your mom told you about that? Uh-uh. I was a kid once. I used to be terrified of the dark. Yeah. Sometimes I have nightmares. I bet everybody expects you to be brave, just like your dad. That's kind of hard. I bet your dad is brave, isn't he? He sure is. Nothing scares him. Nothing? Well, I bet he gets scared about you. That's different. No, it's not. I think everybody's scared of something. It's just a question of what you're scared of. Is your dad brave? No. Not really. I gotta do some stuff. I'll check on you in a couple of minutes, okay? Okay. Excuse me, um, I'm Michelle Novak. Do you know where my husband is? He went below decks, ma'am. I'm sure there's nothing to worry about. He'll be back in a minute. Thank you. 
Michelle, help me. Is she all right? I think so. Oh, doctor, look at her. Michelle, why aren't you with Johnny? He's fine. He's having a I need strength. you to stay with him. Gotten this guy. No record. He lives with his mother. You saw a psycho, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> Very funny. He's the last crew member on Kurt's list. Doors open. Let yourself in. Mrs. Shaw? I'm in here if you don't mind. Mrs. Shaw, I'm Special Agent Ed. That battle where the man said the thing about the whites of their eyes. Bunker Hill, I think. Bunker Hill. Yes, you're correct. Custer's last stand. Correct answer was Bunker Hill. That was very good. Not many young people know these things. Uh, what was it you wanted? We'd like to ask you some questions about your son, Justin. Was he in an accident? The plane? No, it's nothing like that. I worry about him sometimes. All that flying, he's such a good boy. I'm sure he's a good boy, Mrs. Shaw. I mean, that's why we want to talk to you. She's seen the killer, Doctor. I'll need to question her. We can try, but he won't get any answers. She's in shock. You can't give her something? I'm going to, but it'll put her to sleep. <sighs> Johnny's gone. <laughs> I told him not to leave his seat. Michelle, you shouldn't have left him alone. He wasn't alone. I asked that steward, um, just to keep an eye on him. Everything OK, folks? Where is my son? He's fine, sir. Um, Mrs. Novak, I've been keeping an eye on him, and Johnny told me that he was bored and he didn't feel like taking a nap. Dean had those uh, electronic games, so they went back there to pick one out. I hope that. Dean, where's my son? Your son? I'm sorry. I don't know who your son is. Look, Justin said that you brought my son down here to give him one of your electronic games. Now, where is he? I don't handle the first-class passengers, sir. I don't know why he'd say that. You coming with me? No, 
let's go. Sweetheart, I need you to wait here. Uh, I'll keep looking. Does he have a girlfriend? Um, is there someone... Someone else? No, of course not. He takes care of me. That is what a son does. A good son. It is the least he can do after... After what? It was an accident, just an accident. He put you in this wheelchair, didn't he? You don't really think he deliberately pushed me down those stairs, do you? You're saying it was an accident? I was seeing a man. Justin was 10. We had an argument. Now I'm in a wheelchair. He has always blamed me for his father leaving. I'd like to take a look at your son's room. My son is somewhere on this plane. And if I have to comb every inch of it, I'm going to find him. But it's not going to take that long, is it, Dean? Because you're going to tell me where he is. Right. No. This is crazy. It's a plane, sir. How could he possibly be missing? You're not making a mess in there, I hope. Maybe we're barking up the wrong tree. Yeah, well, just keep barking. I want you to leave everything exactly as you found it. Yes. Dr. Shell. Where's my son? Funny. That's exactly what I wanted to talk to you about. If you go into the alley and there's an elevator there, get on it and come downstairs. We'll have a little family reunion. You love Johnny, don't you? Of course I do. Then you won't bring your husband. That would be very bad for Johnny's health. See ya. <sighs> this game anymore, Dean. I'm gonna stop lying. Lying? Why would I lie to you, sir? You were awful quick to blame the murder of that passenger on Carl Reese. Now, wait a minute. I was just trying to help you there. I want to know where my son is. What's going on here? Stay out of this, Captain. Dean knows where my son is, and he's gonna tell me right now. I don't know anything about it, Captain, I swear. You think Dean killed all these women, and now is taking your son? What women? What are you talking about? I can vouch for Dean. I've done over a hundred flights with him. What about Justin? I can't tell you a thing about him. Why not? He keeps to himself. No one knows anything about his personal life. He stays here. You don't have him out of your sight, all right? He stays here! Miss, do you know where Justin is? Uh, he's not up here. What about my wife? No, I'm sorry.
There's only two pieces missing. That's all he needs to complete the set. What happens then? It's called compulsive pattern completion. When he gets the last piece, it's over. What do you mean, over? Why am I? Had a nice nap, did we? I want my mom. Who doesn't? Give me my son. Mom! It's okay, baby. Mommy's here. Hello, Mrs. Novak. Came along. Smart girl. You have me now. You don't need him. Let him go. No, no. I do need him. And I need your daddy, too. Why? Well, what's a family without a daddy, huh? I'm not afraid of you. Tough guy all of a sudden, huh? Please, please don't hurt my son. My dad's gonna get you. Well, you better hurry up. <laughs>
So what's your story, Justin? You were abused? Oh, oh please. But the big FBI man took some psychology classes. I'm just trying to figure you out, Cal. Who was it, your father? I'm not playing this game, Novak. Who was it, your mother? Dad! Mr. Novak, please stay back or I'll snap his neck, I promise you. You hear me? Mrs. Novak, please! Give me my son. Must have been some piece of work, your mother. You can't kill her, so you're killing all these other women, huh? I take care of my mother. Yeah, she not Justin. Over here. You lay her out nice. Just shut up. Huh? Shut up! You know, you don't get it at all, Novak, do you? Well, you've had it way too easy, Kurt. Kurt, are you listening to me? Kurt, do you hear me? Dad! Hello, Justin. No! Don't do it! Hey! Maybe Johnny would like to try his luck in the water before the plane goes down! Hey! Don't do it, Justin! You take another step and he is gone! No! Don't worry, buddy! My offer still stands, Justin. Be with him. What do you say? Don't listen to her, Justin. It's between you and me! Don't do it! It's never gonna be over until we work this out! Come on, be for them! That's what you want! Don't I press the button, the plane goes down right now! Huh? What's the matter, Justin? You don't like it face to face? Not your style, is it? You get scared now, aren't you, Justin? You like sneaking up on women, don't you? That's something you can handle. Shut up! Shut up! This is between you and me! You let my son go! Justin! Let my son go!
Mr. Shaw, there's a car waiting for you. Nice work, Kurt. It was a family effort, really. When I said I wanted to be in the loop, this isn't what I had in mind. Let's get him out of here. I'll be back in a minute. He had a whole little photo display going on in his cellar. He only needed a couple shots to complete the set. Got him, too. Your mother thinks the world of you. You wouldn't mind doing the paperwork on this one, would you? There's some people I need to spend time with. I was going to suggest that. There's a car for you. All right, family, let's get out of here, huh? Dad, you know I was wondering? What were you wondering? Well, that wasn't really a vacation. So, let me go somewhere else. All right, let's go somewhere more adventurous this time. Yeah. Like camping in the backyard. <laughs> oh, let's go. Murder, She Wrote, next on Hallmark Channel. Make yourself at home. There's a star on every corner. There's a star inside. Every Sunday night at 8, Hallmark Movie Channel lights up the night with the Emmy Award-winning Hallmark Hall of Fame. All the timeless stories you'll never forget. They're all waiting for you every Sunday night at 8 on Hallmark Movie Channel. In HD where available, there's no better place to see the stars. There's a star inside. They're on vacation. They sign us up as dance hosts. Dance hosts and cruising for chicks. Think of yourselves as butterflies. If I play my cards right, I'll wind up on Easy Street. Jack Lemon. I don't want to have anything to do with this. And Walter Matthau. Out to Sea, Tuesday at 9 on Hallmark Channel.